sometimes when um, people make it onto the court, they'll be um, kind of tagged by what president put them on there. And so this is a list of all the presidents that have put people on the current Supreme Court. And you'll notice that um, there are three people put on by Democratic presidents. Uh, this person, Stephen Breyer, is about to be replaced by President Biden's pick, uh, Ketanji Brown Jackson. And then the other people have been appointed by Republican presidents. And so um, basically, if you think about it, a president would try to have people on the court that they think would most likely agree with policies and ways of looking at the world that they would. And so in the current environment, we would think that six of the nine justices are more conservative and three of the justices are more liberal. And so that means that on the court, the court is seen as more conservative. What does this actually mean? It's a little bit different than politics. We talked about liberal and conservative on like size of government and scope of government. It's not as much of that when you get into the court system, but there are basically, if the court's job is to interpret the constitution, there's kind of two dominant ways that you think about doing that. The first one would be associated with someone that would be more liberal, which is, it's a philosophy where you look at the law, you look at the constitution, but you also take into account a lot of societal implications for your decision and what that will do to society or where society is at on a certain issue, you're kind of taking in context, more context than what the law itself says or what the constitution itself says. You're making more kind of implied decision-making, right? If you do that, you're seen as a more liberal justice. If you have judicial restraint, that means you're really only focused on what the text of the law says, what the text of the constitution says, what the meaning was at the time it was written and not necessarily where society is at that moment. You're also unlikely to overturn cases if there's established what we call precedents, meaning prior Supreme Court cases. So unless you see good reason for overturning it, you're unlikely to make those decisions. That's restraint. That's seen by somebody that's more conservative. Okay. What presidents try to do is they try to figure out based on the, on the decisions that judges have made at lower levels, like district court or appeals court, what will they do if they get on the Supreme Court? They try to predict. And so they try to figure out based on their caseload history, what kind of way do they interpret the Constitution? And they try to mix somebody, if they're a Democrat, that somebody's more got more judicial activism, and if they're conservative, more judicial restraint. It doesn't always work, but that's in general what they would do. So party politics is an influence on these judges because they're picked by politicians, even though they, they themselves may not be politicians, because they're picked by politicians, the president, and confirmed by politicians, the Senate, they're always seen a little bit in a political lens. They try not to be, and they can get in trouble if their decisions are seen as really, really political. Like all the Republicans do this. Like if you have a 6-3 vote, that doesn't look good for the court because it means that it just came down to what the Republicans kind of thought and what the Democrats kind of thought. And they don't want to be seen that way, but sometimes that can happen to them. So there's definitely an influence on the court. They are also influenced by perception uh, and what the outside world thinks of their decisions. And it's the court's job to kind of be seen as above politics. That's what they want to be seen at. But there's just a lot of influences that could, could factor in. Also, the way judges look at cases are obviously dictated by their past, you know, prior experience. So um, what's their upbringing like? Where did they live? What law school did they go to? What's their role been? Um, have they been a father or a mother or a grandfather? Uh, what kind of relationships do they have? I mean, these are all influences that would influence as justices on the court. And they bring that with them to the bench. And so... Um, Part of the reason that um, President Biden was happy to nominate Ketanji Brown Jackson is for the first time, there will be the voice of a, of a black American woman and, and some of the experiences that, that she has had that may be different from other members of the court. Um, and then they will influence each other on the decisions they make and the opinions that they write. So there's a lot that goes into these decisions. I do think it's safe to say that the court is more conservative. You should expect that there will be more restraint in cases and that decisions will potentially um, push back uh, on politicians that are more democratic because they want to maybe expand the role of government and the influence of government. And you would expect the court to check that a little bit more. I don't think that's inaccurate. Um, as far as individual decisions, it's going to potentially, sometimes it won't all line up though. There will be times where there might be an 8-0 decision or a 9-0 decision or a 7-1 decision or a 7-2 decision. And... Sometimes, you know, some of the people that you consider Republicans might side with people that are Democrats. And I gave you an example in an earlier one. But that's kind of where the Supreme Court sits right now. It's seen as conservative. It hasn't always been that way. 
Um, there's nine people, there's a new person added, and these are the factors that influence their decision making.